Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Chris Marie, and if you're new to my channel, hello, welcome. And on today's episode, <laughs> episode, on today's video, we are making spaghetti squash alfredo. This is so, 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 so good. There's so many possibilities you can do with spaghetti squash. But like I said, I'm doing the Alfredo version. And you guys, stay tuned if you want to learn how to make this. Don't forget to subscribe down below. Give this video a big thumbs up. And let's begin. All right, guys. I know I look a little crazy. Um, it is still like 10 in the morning. But hubby has to leave early for some deployment stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and make his lunch dinner. And show you guys how we start the process we're gonna go ahead and preheat our oven to 400 so it's what I'm doing right now so preheat it to 400 let that bad boy um, heat up before you put anything in I have my coffee cuz the girl can't start the day without coffee I've already been up since like literally six in the morning um just you know mommy duties fed the baby at six fed the baby at eight took her a bath everything yes I brushed my teeth which by the way I hate brushing my teeth to then drink coffee right after I feel like you need to do it the opposite way but you know it's not how I roll, I guess. So, cheers. Mm. Hot. Hot. And we got the princess over here staring at herself. <laughs> yes, that is a car mirror. However, it does not fit in our sports car. So, we put it in her pack and play. Hey, mommy. She took a bath. She's nice and relaxed while mommy records a YouTube video. <laughs> Oh my god, this is so funny. Alright, so for this, you want to get yourself one spaghetti squash. Make sure it says spaghetti squash. Don't do what I did and last time I got a butternut squash. Um, and I thought it would be the same thing. Apparently not. It has to be spaghetti squash, guys. Um, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to cut this. And I'm going to show you guys because I do have struggles with cutting this and um all right so you want to make sure that this is rinsed off the sticker is removed and it sets and the way i do it is i just take the knife and i literally just stab it make some puncture holes not all the way through because this is almost like carving a pumpkin i know i'm probably making some of you nervous because i'm just going in and then lifting up so see that the line that's going through you can see some leakage coming on so you just want to make a line of where you're going to cut because then you're going to have to go around it again unless you i mean more power to you unless you can do this whole thing in one shot then go ahead and cut it down the middle halfway long way um, but see that this is all the way in. This gives me a little difficulty. Oh, there we go. Cutting it. Jesus Christ, I need an arm workout. This is it right here. And then this part is always the hard part. So I'm going to, oh my God. Oh, okay, so just pop. All right. And it looks similar like a pumpkin. So we're gonna go ahead and scrape all the guts and the seeds out and just make it pretty much hollow. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that.
all the guts away, you can literally cook this down, saute it with some onions, peppers, garlic, whatever you're choosing in. Um, this is not wasteful. You can actually eat this. You can cook the seeds just like you would with pumpkin seeds. However, I don't eat this, so I will be throwing it out. But I just wanted to put it out there that you don't have to throw this bad boy out. You actually can do something with it. You know what? I'm, I actually might see if I can make something with that. And the texture is kind of, it's kind of veiny and kind of tough. So, I mean, I could try to make like pulled pork with it. Oh, I could try to make pulled pork with that. All right, off topic. So, you want to make sure that these are hollowed out. As you can see, this is perfect, perfect. So, now we're going to go ahead and with seasonings. And this part is very optional as with any recipes I'll be showing you guys. These are the seasonings that I use. You can use the same exact seasonings or you can mock it or modify it, whichever. So I am doing an Alfredo spaghetti squash, but I am going to be doing it on the spicier side. So these are the seasonings I'm going to be using. I put it in a bowl, mix it so I can be able to spread it evenly instead of spreading everything um, all at once. But I take a little bowl. And I take some black pepper. I want to say about a half a teaspoon of each I do. Or a half a teaspoon to a teaspoon because you don't want too, too much. I also do some garlic powder. Then we're going to go ahead and with some salt because you guys know with anything, salt is the base of anything even sweets which a lot of people don't know that but when you make sweets you always have to have salt in it just a little tip you can put some onion powder not too much of that stuff because for some reason onion powder is very overbearing i'm gonna do some parsley flakes now this, you can put very little or more, it doesn't matter. To me, parsley doesn't have a taste to it. Same thing as paprika. Um, cumin, I do half a teaspoon. I don't do a full teaspoon because this is very strong. Red pepper flakes. I might do a teaspoon and a half. <laughs> Some chili powder. Do a little bit of that bad boy. I do half a teaspoon of that. And then a half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. Again, I, like I said, this is a spicy version. Um, if you want to do a simple version, you would just do the garlic, salt, pepper, and parsley flakes with onion powder. And my oven just went on letting me know that it is all set to put the squash in the oven. So I'm going to go ahead and give this a little mix and then sprinkle them on top of the squash. All right, guys, so after mixing, this is pretty much what it's looking like. Your own little dry rub. I'm scared to do this because I don't want it to fall out, but this is what it looks like. Just a little bit, like I said, a little bit goes a long way. You don't need a tad, a ton, I don't know why I said tad. You don't need a ton of seasoning. I mean, you could make it and then store it. I've done that before where I pre-made like little rubs and stuff and then just store them. You can do that. But like I said for the sake of this video, I don't need to do that. I just need that little bit and we're going to go ahead and season these bad boys and I'm going to show you guys exactly how we do that. Now you want to drizzle and when I say drizzle, I mean drizzle olive oil or regular oil. Um, I don't have any more olive oil left, so I'm going to be using regular vegetable oil. And I'm actually, you know what, one second. If you're anything like me where drizzle ends up becoming heavy handed, brush it on. Literally just brush it on. So you want to make sure you have oil on the inside, the hollow side. So I'm going to go ahead and pour a little bit in one of them. That was definitely not a little bit. <laughs> and I'm going to brush the edges, the flats, everything. And then pour that oil in the other one. You guys saw that? Yeah. This is why Chris doesn't know how to drizzle. I need to get one of those oil things that has a stopper. So we're just going to brush. 
brush and they should look like that brush and then this is the fun part this is where we start to season because there's oil down on them the seasoning will stick and this is why I wanted to mix it in a bowl first because if you accidentally put too much it's stuck there unless you go in with the brush and mix it into a hot mess so literally this is the easiest part you just grab some and you just sprinkle some on seasonings could be whatever you guys pretty much want this is what i use you can do very little you could do more if you're a big seasoner um but again this is this is what i use you want to make sure you get the edges really really good you just sprinkle that in there you can even wait to the end to season and saute on the pan but this is how I do it and I mean I have no complaints and again this is Alfredo but this is the same way you would do it if you do marinara or whatever vodka sauce but this is how I'm doing it today all right so this is what it looks like right here so now we're gonna go ahead and grab a baking sheet lay these bad boys on them you can either lay them face up or face down face down you have a chance of the edges charring and burning so you want to make sure you put a foil down um, I'm going to lay them face up because I did put a lot of seasoning in there and I don't want it to drain out when we come back you guys I will show you that sometimes when you have them face up there is some liquid piled in there that is totally fine you just flip it upside down but again you can face it up face it down for the sake of this video I'm going to be facing them just like this up you're gonna put it in the oven at 400 for 25 minutes and then just keep on checking it all right guys so this is what it looks like there's a little bit of liquid that is not oil that's actually liquid from the squash so we're reaching the two minute mark so now that we checked it you can either flip it upside down which I'm going to be doing right now and then we're going to go ahead and cook it for an additional 20 to 25 minutes so this recipe takes 45 to 50 minutes to cook depending on your oven so I'm going to go ahead flip this over add 25 more minutes and then I'll be back so it's been 45 minutes all together and this is how they look they came out and let them sit for three minutes and over here I have some alfredo sauce this is a four cheese alfredo sauce just warming up you guys can make your own alfredo sauce homemade or you can just get the jar like I did it's not a big deal so I'm gonna go ahead and flip these squashes over they've been sitting for a good minute to two and then I'm gonna start shredding them and show you how I do that so when flipping them over, you want to be very careful because as you can see, look how squishy that is. See that? So you want to be extra careful flipping these bad boys over. These tongs are not working, so yeah, that's not smart. How am I going to do this? Okay, one second. I can't do this holding the camera. Perfect. You see all that steam coming out? So when you flip it on, on the face side halfway, it helps cook the spaghetti as well. So now I'm going to let this sit for another two minutes. Um, you don't want them to sit too, too long because then it'll get cold. But I want it to sit enough where I'm able to shred it without burning my fingers, you know, because we need them. So, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and let that sit. Still mixing this up, getting it nice and warm. And then we're going to go ahead and put everything together. And can we talk about the seasonings now? And the caramelization right there yum that's awesome so it's been sitting for a minute to two minutes and this is how I pretty much shred it I'm going to show you guys how I shred one of them and then I'm going to shred the other off camera because this is kind of hard to hold my phone and do this so we're gonna go ahead and starting from the very not the very very edge but in there and you're just gonna start pulling and look at that I do go and get the edges, but I get them at the end, but just see how it came off in the skin. And it pretty much looks like spaghetti. Now, a cute thing you can do is you can scrape all this, dip it in whatever sauce you're making, or put
putting together with and then you can serve it right back in here in these little cute little squash bowls but I'm not gonna do that um the bowls are kind of you know squishy and stuff and again this is for my husband for work but look at that and you want to make sure you mix it all together because that seasoning you want it to incorporate it and if you do still have seasoning left like I do see I have a little bit left here I'm actually gonna throw this in the alfredo there we go to make sure that everything is incorporated nicely so you don't get chunks of seasoning on certain spots look at that I gotta get that off um, <laughs> on certain spots of the squash you want to make sure that everything is mixed properly so I'm gonna go ahead and finish scraping this mixing it all together and then scraping that one and then we're gonna add the alfredo guys so i moved the squash i took them out of their shells and if you want to reserve it it means this is what you still want to do because you need this to cool down to firm up again but like i said i'm not going to be serving it in the squash I may or may not, I'm not sure. But I went ahead and scraped everything out and took it and put it right in here, mix everything up. And if you guys do the same way that I seasoned it and just leave it like this, it tastes like a spicy ramen. It's actually really good, like a chicken soup. Looking like that. So we're gonna go ahead and add the Alfredo and mix everything up. so this is how it's looking and as you can see it's a little runny and that's always the case when it comes to alfredo with spaghetti squash also with marinara because i have tried this with marinara because you gotta guys gotta remember it is a vegetable it does have water in it um so this is how i end up thickening whenever i do marinara or alfredo so i'm gonna go ahead over here i'm gonna grab Parmesan cheese, I don't have a lot left, obviously, but it's, oh, actually, that's, like, barely shit. Okay, well, anyways, another thing <laughs> we can use is breadcrumb. So, I'm going to use, you guys are looking into my pantry right now. <laughs> I'm going to use some Italian-side breadcrumb. You can also use um, panko to crust up for the top, but we're not doing that. We're not fancy today. And I'm going to use a little bit of mozzarella. Um, this is because I don't have, I thought I had a lot of this. Apparently I don't. So I'm going to go ahead and add my Parmesan. Let me show you guys. All right, so I added about a teaspoon and a half of breadcrumb and the rest of my cheese. So that's like a good tablespoon. I'm going to go ahead and mix this. Let's see if I can mix one-handed. <laughs> Just to thicken this bad boy up. The cheese is going to melt. Everything's going to be good. I know it probably looks gross right now on camera, but it, this is actually like bomb. Really bomb. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and mix this off camera because I really can't do it one-handed. I actually did end up putting it back in the shells. I was like, come on, Crystal. This is YouTube. Why not? So I put it back in the shells. I added a little bit of breadcrumb. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and pop it in the oven on high broil for 5 to 10 minutes, just until this is brown. You can add more cheese on top, but because this is Alfredo, we've added that cheese in the mix already. Um, I'm kind of all cheesed out just by looking at this, so <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and pop this in the oven and just let it bake. Another thing I did forget to mention, you want to make sure before you put them back in the shells that they taste good. The seasoning is the seasoning that you want because once you bake them, they say girl. So you want to make sure they taste the perfect spiciness 
the perfect whatever seasoning you want and then pop them in. Also, I forgot to mention, you want to be careful when placing them on the cookie sheet that they don't tip because they are still a little soft and then all the weight of the alfredo and all that in there does make the squash shell kind of tip a little bit so if you need to just um foil some balls and put them around just to keep them up right but they're looking pretty good i'm going to show you guys right now so they've been in there for two minutes to be exact and you can see that one's tipping a little bit but we're okay but they are leaning on each other to be able to have support so we have another three minutes left to let those finish cooking and again like i said you guys can add more cheese on top to get that crust on top or panko crumbs but i just kept it simple with breadcrumbs really quickly because if any of you shop at aldi's seriously consider getting these limited time harvest bagels they are so good they're multi-green bagels with cranberries and seeds they have like pumpkin seeds like a bunch of different things and these are so good i love my bagels like almost on the burnt side i'm not gonna lie to you guys but with these i can't do that because with all the nuts that are in there it gets gross but these warmed up like even in the microwave like soft with some butter or cream cheese or preserves or jelly whatever the hell you eat your bagels with these are bomb um i actually was snacking on this in between clips but you guys didn't see because i didn't show you because i it wasn't even snacking, it was more like scarfing it down, but um, they are bomb. So just a little tip for you guys, if you're into bagels and it is the fall time right now, definitely look into getting those bagels because they are bomb. They also have pumpkin cookies that I was supposed to show you guys, but they didn't last in this house more than two days because those cookies were bomb. If I get them again, I will show you guys. A lot of you have been requesting how do I make my french style croissants and yes i am going to be making that video very very soon there goes my oven the squash are pretty much done but really quickly i'm going to be making that video for you guys in the new house because we are moving like in three three days the movers are gonna pack up the whole house so i mean i could technically make that today or tomorrow and just record it but um it's very technical just like the fried ice cream so it will be a longer video but if you guys really want to see that let me know um you know what? i may or may not make that to be honest make that my last video in this house um we'll see we'll see but you guys stay tuned for that because i know a lot of people request that on snapchat and that's actually a recipe i don't give out but i'm willing to because I had so many people asking me, how do you make those? And when I worked at the bank before moving out here with my husband, I used to make those faithfully, those and cinnamon rolls for my coworkers. So if you're my coworker and you remember, leave me an emoji down. Um, but yes, I will be recording that video because everyone keeps asking me for it. So fine. But um I need to stop blabbing per usual guys you know i blab in every video because my squash are about to burn so let me take these out i let the squash sit for a good four minutes and look at look how bomb that looks let's get a better close-up pure beauty i'm telling you this is bomb all right now to try it all right guys moment of silence please as per usual we are gonna do our asmr hi guys welcome to my channel it's your girl chris marie and we're doing an asmr of alfredo spaghetti squash Mmm, guys, this is really good. <laughs> Fuck that ASMR shit. Look at that steam. And it's not that hot. I know it looks it hot because of the steam right there, but. Oh, 
Sorry. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. You guys definitely need to try this and make it. It's perfect. It's buttery. Um, it does, really does have a different texture because of spaghetti squash. But it's really, really good. I highly recommend you guys try it. And it has that kick of spiciness. But, um, yeah, I'm going to have my mom try it. That tastes good. Right? Mm-hmm. And I'm not, uh, what's, what's this called? Spaghetti squash. Um, yeah, I'm not a squash person. But this tastes good. I feel like it tastes better than the marinara one I made. The other, uh, when that first came out here? Yeah. Yes, it does. You taste the spices. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she thought she's about to eat my whole damn squash. Watch. Mm-hmm. What do you think? Your face is all cut off. Oh. This is better. This is good. It's yeah. Good? Yeah, it's really good. Can you taste the spices in it? Yeah, it's pretty good. You guys, he's a tough food critic, so if he mm. said it's good, it's good, so you better try it. Very good. Happy anniversary. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Give this video a big thumbs up. If you made it this far, leave down a cheese emoji down below. Comment if you've tried this, tell me how it tastes, what kind of sauce you did. And until next time guys, don't forget to subscribe, give this video a big thumbs up again. And I promise you guys there's going to be more recipe videos since you guys keep asking for them on Snapchat and my social medias. I promise, promise, promise you guys I am going to be making way more recipes. So stay tuned for that. I'm going to be trying to record um, the new house when I sign the papers. Tomorrow I get the keys. By the time you guys see this video, I've already got the keys and I most likely already moved in. But, um, yes, so, uh, again, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me get off because I'm blabbing like usual. But, see you guys next time.